Welcome to a rather unusual aircraft review. It's one of the smallest airlines in the world. It flies exclusively to the most remote and coldest place on Earth, and they have a plane that looks like a penguin. I've got to admit, we were a bit anxious about this, but putting our fears aside, we managed to video the experience for you. So strap yourselves in, pray the weather doesn't suddenly turn against us, and it can do, and it can be quite vicious too, and let's enjoy this unique experience together as we fly Antarctic Airways to that place where there are no airports. Antarctica. We begin our journey in the Presidente Carlos Ibanez del Campo International Airport in Punta Arenas, the only airport in the world where the name is longer than the terminal building itself. Punta Arenas is in southern Chile, in the Patagonia region of South America. This is where we boarded our flight. The Antarctic weather can be extremely changeable and you're given a flight slot and then told to be flexible with it. Things don't always go to plan. Seeing as we're in one of the windiest places on Earth and travelling to one of the most exposed and volatile places on Earth, there's no surprise that things can change with a moment's notice. Viewers of a nervous flying disposition? Can you feel the anxiety levels rising? <laughs> yeah, me too. We were boarding from gate one, which wasn't hard to find because it's the only boarding gate in the airport. And before you could say, should we really be doing this? We were through the gate and onto the tarmac. Thank you. This is yours. Thank you. Have a great Thank time. You. DAP Antarctic Airways operates two BAE 146-200 aircraft flying chartered to President Eduardo Frey Montalva Base located at Aerodrome Teniente Rodolfo Marsh on King George Island in the South Shetland Islands. Phew. These two BA-146s have been flying tourists to and from King George Island since 2008 and it is estimated they carry 76% of all air passengers between Antarctica and South America. Ours for the flight, registration CC-ARN, is nearly 27 years old, being made in that epicentre of aerospace manufacture Hatfield in the UK. It now sports the rather fetching livery of a chin-strap penguin. And here I was thinking penguins can't fly. Well, I hope this one does. Hello. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Oh, Welcome. 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 Thank you. Inside the aircraft, the seats are in a 3-2 configuration, something you don't see every day. And I personally like to sit near the front, so we chose row four. You can't reserve seats, so it's first come, first served. We got this great window view from row four. Mm, I love a bit of engine cowling in my videos. Gives it a bit of context, if you know what I mean. When it comes to legroom, modern passenger jets could take a leaf or two out of the BAE-146's book here. There was a ton of room. And I know we're supposed to look at this, but realistically, if we came down in the Drake Passage, I don't think a puny life jacket will save us from the hypothermia. Let's just keep calm, shall we? Soon we were off, and you really remember why these were dubbed the Whisper Jets when you compare the noise to say an Airbus A320 or a 737. Anyway, let's enjoy this moment. Actually, I couldn't take my eyes off the landscape moving smoothly beneath us. The southernmost part of the world where the vast Andes mountain range comes to an end is hugely absorbing. And seeing these enormous glaciers from the air was utterly magical. Okay, so at this point the stewards started bringing round the food and drinks. Yes, you get an in-flight meal. How rare is that these days on short haul? But this is no ordinary short haul. Now, 
This is where in our review we have to put in a gentle caveat. The food and drink you see here may or may not be the food and drink you also get if you fly with Antarctica Airways. Because they're all chartered flights, meaning all the seats are paid for by a travel company and then sold to their customers, each cruise or travel company chartering the flight will have their own setup. We are on a voyage to Antarctica with Aurora Expeditions, so they have chartered this flight, but there are many cruise lines who do the same, and fly cruises to Antarctica are becoming increasingly popular. Uh, for example, if you're flying with Silver Sea or Quark or any other operator, you may get a different in-flight setup. That said, although the sandwiches look a little limp, it was all very fresh and edible indeed, and the drinks, in particular the champagne, was free-flowing and in abundance. Anyway, round this time we were flying over the very tip of Chile and Cape Horn and out into the dreaded Drake Passage. As we flew towards King George Island, the Drake was covered with thick cloud, but that really didn't matter. We had more bubbly and a chance to relax. And relax we did. The flight was the smoothest, quietest flight we'd been on in years. It was hard to believe we were flying to the end of the world. Did I mention there was a huge amount of space under the seats in front of you to store your carry-on? The one downside that caused us a bit of apprehension was the baggage limits on the aircraft. They are strict and quite restrictive. For this voyage, you were allowed one piece of checked baggage, no heavier than 20 kilos, and one soft carry-on at just 7 kilograms. My photography equipment weighs around 12 kilos, so you can see this caused a bit of stress, as none of it could be checked in the hold. Somehow we figured it out though, and just be aware of any limits that may be imposed on you. It could vary depending on who's chartering the plane and how full it is. Just a friendly word of warning. Soon we were starting our descent, and outside our window was the very first glimpse of the seventh continent. Some gigantic mountains poking above the clouds. What a sight! We were soon below the cloud and approaching the runway. The airstrip itself is 1300 meters long and made of volcanic gravel which I suspected it could make for an interesting landing. Like landing on a beach, or your neighbour's driveway. <laughs> Don't worry though, the aircraft has been fitted with special tyres that can handle the rough surface and the odd stone chip. And the BA-146 is also famous for taking off and landing on short runways. Anyway, let's enjoy the landing. Wow, look at that guy. With only 50 intercontinental flights each season landing here, don't expect a terminal, a Starbucks, heck even a toilet. Photography of the bases adjoining the airstrip is strictly forbidden. One is Chilean and the other Russian. But you can get a crafty snap of the plane when you get off and the famous sign because they face the other way. In summary, all my fears and anxieties about the flight were completely unfounded. It was an incredibly convenient way to start your Antarctic adventure without the near two-day Drake Passage crossing by traditional means. The flight was smooth and the aircraft, despite approaching 30 years old, was fabulous, as was the cabin crew. We'd definitely do this again. We hope you've enjoyed this little flight review of the Antarctic Airways BAE 146-200 chartered service to Antarctica. If you're interested in knowing more about what happened next, then please subscribe and look out for our Antarctic Adventure vlogs. Thank you.